Hello, it's Margaret with your grooming instruction. And this is Lucky. He needs his feet shaved. And I'm going to start with explaining to you the blades. This is a 30 blade. It's a very close blade. I wouldn't recommend it for a pink skinned dog like Lucky. It's better to use that on a dog with black hair or dark skin. On Lucky, I would use a 15. If he had thick coat and dark skin or was a dark color dog, I would use this 5 8 which is really nice. It cuts through really fast, really cleanly, but you have to be super careful because it's very sharp here. An important part of grooming a dog is cooperation from the dog. Let me show you my setup. If you're grooming at home, you're probably not going to have this kind of setup. It's a noose and a bar. So with this setup, you can really control the dog. If you don't have one, I suggest you buy the kind that clamps on the side of the table because it's very difficult to work on a dog, especially a poodle, a dog that needs a lot of trimming, without any way to restrain them. So, right now he's loose. He's a very well-behaved dog. When I start doing his feet, I'm going to shorten this a little. And if I had another kind of restraint. This one has holes so it goes up about three inches at a time. So that's why I just flip that over. There are other kinds that move in smaller increments. So you want to have some restraint. You don't want to choke him, but you don't want him wandering all over the table either. So I'm going to ask him to sit because when he's sitting that's a much better position for you to work from because the weight of his body will enable, enable you to have more control. If he just won't sit, it's no big deal. You can let him stand up. But there's two ways you can approach shaving the feet. With the clipper in your right hand, assuming you're right-handed, you would pick up his foot and you're kind of underneath the dog. The other way is to wrap your arm around him and get a grip on him. This is if the dog is giving you trouble and shave from this position. And of course, on the other side, you would just hold from under the dog and clip from the outside. On the front, you can do that on the front too. If the dog is difficult about having its feet shaved, just wrap your arm around them you know, and then you just change sides. It works really well. It helps the dog to calm down because you're giving them kind of a hug. On the front, if the dog is good, you can just shave from the front. Okay, so now we're going to start shaving under Lucky's feet. I'm going to use a 15 blade because he has tender feet. Otherwise, I would recommend a 30 because it's just quicker and easier. As you see, I'm wearing a glove, and the reason for that is I get hairs under my fingernails and cut hairs, they really hurt. So a lot of people don't have that problem, but if you do, just wear a glove on one hand. So we're going to start with shaving the big pad. So we're going to go very close to the big pad. It's almost like a scoop, but don't go too far because you don't want him to look stupid <laughs> so I'd say that's like three quarters of an inch you could even do less but he's a pet dog so on a show dog it would be just a tiny amount but on a pet dog you do more because people do want their feet clean so see this big pad there's a V here so I'm gonna take the clippers and I'm gonna try to keep the lower corner of the clippers from passing beyond that so I'll go very close to that pad, and that's not going to hurt him. I'm not going to push super hard, though, because there are tendons there. So you're not going to cut tendons off of a dog, but because they stick up higher, you may uh, nick them or nick the skin. You don't want to do that. If you're agile enough to peel the 
toes back a little, go ahead and do that. If not, just hold the foot up here. And you want a good grip. You don't want a death grip. Don't have a death grip. But you want a fairly solid grip, especially if your dog has not had its feet shaved much. Don't let go. Very important. The dog will soon learn just to tolerate it. You won't hurt them. And frequently check the blade. Check it with your hand. This is a cool day. On a warm day, your blades will warm up really fast. So be aware of that. On a colder day, the colder the day, the longer it takes for them to heat up. So now I'm going to go along the sides of the pads like that. Again, keeping mindful of where my line is. And if there's an excessive amount of hair here, I will. I do not go like this. Do not, do not. You're just staying, if you can see, kind of level with the pad. Then you dip in on the sides of the big pad. Okay, now we'll move to the front. So now we're going to shave a front foot, unlucky, because it's more difficult to show you on a back foot. We're not going up very far. See this, this, there's a joint here by the toe, then there's another joint where the joints all come together. It's, maybe you want to call it a wrist. It's actually part of the pastern. But you want to stop there and then not go much above that. Otherwise, he would look silly. So I'm starting at the toes. And if you want to practice on your own hand, if you're not familiar with clippers, it's a good idea to get familiar and to see at what point they would be cutting. And I'm wearing a glove again because of hair that goes in my fingernails. You can do that or not do it. But you want to follow your hand, if you're not used to clippers, and just feel. You can press really hard. See, it's nicked the rubber glove, but it wouldn't have nicked my skin. You can press pretty hard, but you still want to be aware of where your blade is. And you don't cut, like, level. You actually, because this is beveled here, you have to point them down to cut. See? You don't, you don't cut along the flat. You're at this angle. I'd say that's uh, maybe 30 degrees. I'm not sure. Anyway, while he's sitting, we clean up the outside of the foot, starting at the toenails, just the outside, along the sides, minding our, mind, our line there, rather. Then we start working our way in from the toenails. We spread the toes, and the way I'm doing that is with my finger pressing, pressing the toes apart. So in case I had the foot up too high earlier. Again, starting at the toes, you shave the entire outside of the foot, and then with this finger, you spread them. See? Spread toes, spread the web. Now they're apart, so I can go down the sides here. It's almost like a little canyon to where the toes join here using the lower edge, the lower edge of my clipper blade. Flip it over and use the other edge. So you're slowly cleaning up more and more of the foot. Then at this point you can kind of scoop through like this using more of the blade. Okay, for the web, you're going to use this finger again. This finger is going to spread the web and kind of protect it. Because if you were to go straight in, especially with a 40 or 30, you would cut his skin. And we do not want to ever do that. So coming close to the nail again, using my finger as a guard for the web. And don't be afraid to just take a breath and blow that hair away if it's in your way. Okay, now at this point, we've got a few little hairs in here. And you're not really going to be able to get them with a the clipper unless you spread them with your finger. So this is where it takes some agility to do a really good foot shave. Spread, spread the toe apart, take your finger and push that 
and then just hook underneath it. That one didn't move, so I'll do it again. And the last one. Good boy, Lucky. So he's fussing, so I'm going to be sure and feel these. These are getting warm. They're not hot. They're not going to burn, but they're warm. So I'll stop for now. That's pretty much a good clean foot. It isn't probably what I would, except for a show, but for a home trim or even a grooming shop customer, that's good enough. On a show dog, you do that with a 40, and that foot would be bald. So that's not necessary. I don't recommend it for pet dogs.